Have you been shopping for a cheap amplifier and been tempted by the Fozzy Audio BT 120A amp for just $80, but you're not quite sure if this will work with your current sound system or how it will sound overall? Or are you someone who's been buying Hi-Fi Audio for years and have run across these cheap little units on Amazon and wondered if they can really sound as good as people say for their low price? Well, I've spent the last month listening to this little amp and have really wrestled with how to present this review as I think some people will find it perfect and others will find it rather boring. So in this video, I wanna quickly review the specs of this amp, tell you about the pros and cons of owning one, and then I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the sound and if you stick around long enough, I wanna talk about the irony of this phrase, hi-fi made fun from Fozzy Audio. But before we do that, let's talk about the specs of the Fozzy BT-20A next. The Fozzy BT-20A is a small Class D amplifier made in China that normally retails for $89.99, but can often be found on Amazon for as low as $79.99. This unit is an amplifier only, allowing you to hook up a one audio source whether it be a preamp, a CD player, or a DAC. And it also comes with the ability to stream music via built-in Bluetooth connectivity. Now it's worth noting, this does not have a phono stage, so if you wanna use it to listen to records, you'll need to either have an external phono preamp or a turntable with a built-in phono preamp. Now this little amp can power one set of passive speakers at 100 watts per channel. And the speaker ratings go from eight ohms all the way down to four ohms. Now the power is derived from two PCS Texas, Texas Instrument chips located inside the amplifier. The amp has three buttons on the front of the unit. They can control treble, bass, and volume. It also has this little metal switch here to power the unit on and off. And down here is a tiny little light that turns red when the unit is powered on and blue when Bluetooth is connected. And now that I've shown you the specs, let's talk about the pros of owning this little amplifier next. One of the obvious pros of this amplifier is its little size, allowing you to put it almost anywhere. If you do not have a lot of room for a traditional stereo setup, the Fozzy is easy to squeeze into a tight spot. Another pro is the overall power of this amplifier. Fozzy Audio lists it at 100 watts per channel, which means this will easily power most speakers that you can throw at it, including eight ohm speakers all the way down to four ohms. And lastly, Fozzy Audio included built-in Bluetooth. And that basically means that you can set this up with a pair of bookshelf speakers and start playing music from your phone directly to this without even having to have a sound source like a CD player or a preamp or anything like that. So beginners might find it fun to just be able to plug this up, power it on, connect your speakers, turn on Bluetooth and start listening right away. Now, before we talk about how this amplifier sounds, let me point out a couple cons I noticed while using this unit. Okay, so at the risk of sounding vain, I've come to realize that part of what I love the most about this hi-fi hobby is the fact that a lot of audio gear looks awesome when you display it at your home or office. This probably comes from my love of vintage audio and owning pieces like uh, Marantz 2270 or Macintosh MC 2505, 2505 amplifier, both of which I've reviewed here on my channel. But I just love sharing photos of these pieces when I'm listening to music, like posting a photo on Instagram and just showing people I'm listening to 
um, X record and using X gear. And a lot of people really enjoy seeing, you know, the look of that gear. And if they ever come to my house and notice it, they usually ask me a lot of questions about it and comment about how great it looks. To me, this little amplifier, it's just boring looking. Like there's nothing exciting about this at all. <laughs> like, again, I know it sounds vain, but this just wouldn't be exciting for me to be displayed at home. Like, I don't think anyone's gonna come in and go, oh wow, look at that great looking amplifier. I mean, if anything, they may say like, what is that weird little thing down there? And they might find it interesting that the sound that's being produced is coming from such a little amplifier, but I'm not posting photos of what I'm listening to on Instagram with this in the background bragging about how it looks. Again, I know it sounds vain, and I know one of the pros I said was the little size of this amplifier, but you know, look, I know I can't expect much for just $80, but to me, it's just kind of boring looking and not that exciting. Now, most of these inexpensive Chinese amplifiers do not include a phono stage, which means that if you're shopping around and thinking about buying one of these for vinyl playback, just note that you're gonna either need to purchase an external phono preamp to connect to this amplifier, or you're going to have to have a built-in preamp in your turntable in order to listen to your vinyl records with this amp. Now, my biggest con with this little amp is its sound. Let's get further into that next. So I thought a lot about how to address the sound of this little amplifier as I feel like it really appeals to two different audiences. And so I kind of want to address the way it sounds like for each of those audiences. The first I feel like are people that are just getting into this hobby and want to buy something um, that's affordable just to get in the game. The other group are people that have been listening to Hi-Fi Audio for a long time and are curious just how this amp sounds and especially in comparison to some of the more expensive units they've bought over time. So let me start by addressing the people that are just getting into the Hi-Fi hobby. For $80, this amp is going to work just fine. It's gonna power your speakers and it's gonna produce music. And if you are someone that is used to listening to audio playback via, you know, AirPods or a cheap Bluetooth speaker, I think that you're going to find that the Fozzy amplifier will be an upgrade in terms of the playback. To me, the Fozzy it has a sound that's very typical of class D amplifiers, which means it produces the sound with plenty of power, but it really lacks detail, accuracy, and sound stage. I mean, it pretty much sounds like an $80 amplifier. And if you're someone that is just getting started with building your first stereo system, that's probably fine. However, after you buy the Fosse, I would encourage you to continue saving money to invest a little bit more into a class AB amplifier, something like an Emotiva Basex A2M for $350, or even the Cambridge AXA25 amp for just $399. The Emotiva and Cambridge amplifiers, even though they're more expensive than the Fosse amp, they're gonna provide you with a much more lively listening experience with your music, and you're going to hear things in your music that you've never heard before. Now for anyone who's been in the hi-fi hobby for a while and have been tempted to buy this little amp to compare it to their other hi-fi gear, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you that this little amp is not going to compare. Now, I would say you might buy this just because it's like small and cheap and could fit almost anywhere. Uh, you know, like if you have a lot of hi-fi gear already, this would probably be great for like a secondary system or maybe your office or maybe like a garage workshop where things are going to be getting really dusty and dirty. But look, I wouldn't buy this for critical listening. All the exciting musicality that you hear in your other hi-fi amps, they just aren't present 
in a Class D budget amp like the Fozzie BT-20A. Okay, to sum up how the Fosse Audio sounds. If you're someone that's new to Hi-Fi Audio and you're looking to buy something to just get started, I think that this amplifier will sound adequate for your needs, especially if you're upgrading from like a cheap Bluetooth uh, speaker, something along those lines. But note that if you spend a little bit more money um, later on down the road, you're gonna get amplifiers that will present music to you in a much more exciting way. And I think that applies for those of us who have been buying those amplifiers for most of our life. The musicality that we get from those uh, class AB amps are just not going to be presented in the same way with this inexpensive class D amp. It's budget sound for a budget price. Now before I let you go, I wanted to show you this box that the amplifier came in from Fozzy Audio, which by the way, is kind of tricky to say, Fozzy Audio. I keep messing it up and having to start over. <laughs> anyway, the slogan on this box says, Hi-Fi made fun. And it's this fun part that I'm wrestling with. Is the BT-20A actually fun? Let's talk more about that next. Now I found the slogan hi-fi made fun on this box kind of ironic because I'm gonna be honest, to me, the BT-20A really wasn't that much fun. Now, let's talk about that definition of fun because my idea of fun may be different than Fozzy Audio's and maybe even yours. Now the reason why I'm saying this amplifier wasn't much fun for me is because not once while listening to music with this amplifier was I ever surprised by the sound. And to me, after all these years and listening to all these different components, I think that's what I find fun, is when I'm listening to an amplifier and all of a sudden I hear something new or something interesting in music that I've never heard before. And that could be like, better treble, greater detail. Um, it could be a, a more like accurate bass, you know, that's helping keep the beat better. It could just even be a, a wider soundstage. Um, it could even be sort of the idea that you can hear things 3D, where, where if I'm listening to a jazz record, I may be able to tell the guitar player is sitting, you know, over here on this mic while the drummer is back in the room being mic'd there. These are all things that class A, B, more expensive amplifiers can provide and f that I find fun. And to me, when listening to the Fosse, I just never really had that fun experience listening to music. But, and this is why I've wrestled with how to present this review. Your definition of fun may be greatly different than my definition of fun. My definition of fun relies on being surprised by great sound. Yours may be simply that you're new to this hobby and that you find it fun that you can buy a small amp with a lot of power for a low price. And I'll be honest with you, if you're new to the hobby, that is a lot of fun. But if you're looking for a fun audible experience, I would recommend saving a little bit more money and buying some of those amps I mentioned earlier, whether it's Emotiva, Cambridge, something along those lines, it's gonna present a much more fun, audible experience down the road. Now heads up, this Fosse amplifier isn't the first piece of budget gear I've reviewed. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on the quirky little IEMA T9 amplifier, you can see that by watching this video here.